Hi everybody. I thought today we need to discuss spray tips and I'm going to tell you the spray tips I've got and explain what spray tip will do what job for the job that I'm obviously doing. Um, basic stuff to a lot of people but there'll be people watching today that won't know about spray tips and just me giving the basics that you've probably seen on the internet before might just help somebody along because I'm explaining it because what I've got is probably what you're wanting. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to show you what I've got in my box, explain what each tip is and how it works on the gun and then we'll go from there. And again, if there's any questions, comments in the boxes below. So I've got my toolbox, this is the spray gear that I've got. I'll put them on there. These are the guards, these are the spray tip guards. I've got I don't know that you can see that. I'll start with the guards. Each guard that you can get matches the spray tips. So this is a Tri-Tech guard. That goes with Tri-Tech spray tips. I think there are a few that do intermix. I'm not sure what they are. It might be the Wagner, Wagner, however you want to call it but I keep the correct tip with the correct guard. That's how it should be. So these are Tri-Tech tips, and these are Tri-Tech guards. The gold one's fine finish, and then you might get a, a color, I don't know got one. We'll call it a jade color, I think. We'll call it jade. Got a jade colored spray tip there, if you can just see it. And that's just for general spraying, that's just ordinary emulsions on walls and things. There's nothing fine finish about that. The fine finish ones are like a double layer sprayer. Now, what I want to talk about when it comes to the spray tips is the numbers. I don't know if you can see that there. Let's focus in. Can you see that? That says five, that says five sixteen. Now how you work the numbers out is is the five at the front is your, is your spray pattern, is your spray pattern. So if you count a five and times it by two, that gives you 10. So that will give you roughly a 10 inch spray pattern. Now, don't forget, you're spraying hands length, what, 30, 30 centimeters? You're spraying a foot, 12 inches away from the surface. So if you gauge it that you're spraying at a foot from the surface, that five is your 10 inch, and that should be the correct distance away from the wall that gives you a 10 inch spray fan pattern. Now, the 16, it's 16 thousandths of an inch, so it's 0 0.016. If I'm wrong, somebody correct me on, on the comments below. Now how that is, it's orifice size. Let's call it, let's go back to basics, orifice size holes, it's the hole. So it's the hole that the paint goes through and that's the size of it. The bigger the number, so if we go to an 18, we go to a 17, 18, 19, 20, 21 up, the bigger the hole, that lets more paint through. The smaller the number, I've got one. I've got a beauty here. Smaller the number, this is a 206. So that 06 would be 0 0.006 of an inch. So really, really small. That's obviously going to let a less amount of paint through than what the 15 is going to do. Uh, sorry, the 16. And this is a 206. So that's going to give me a four inch spray fan pattern. Obviously my fingers aren't correct, but you get the idea. That's going to give me four inch compared to one that's going to give me 10 inch. Now that's the orifice size again. So the 06 is the orifice. You can go to an 08, which I've got. I think I've got an 08 somewhere. I've got a 208. If you can just focus in on that. 208, so there's a 208, which is slightly bigger than the 206. Common sense. But we've got to remember orifice size. If you think 
when your wife's having a baby or if you're having a baby the dilation obviously small numbers the baby's not going to come out bigger numbers the baby comes out so the lower the number the smaller the bigger the number the bigger that means you're going to get finer paint going through a, a 206 your paint's got to be a better quality paint that's more for your fine finishing which is probably your eggshells or your um, flat finishes so we use lots of Ticarilla paint so they're Ticarilla paints if you're looking at the Helmy range of eggshells or the Everolls you could be spraying your woodwork I won't call it trim because trims what you find on a car that's the American term trim let's call it woodwork and that's what we're talking about if you're doing woodwork finishing you're going to look at smaller numbers because you need to be spraying smaller areas so you look at your twos you can get a three for a six inch various sizes and the orifice that's going to let finer quality paint through than the bigger numbers and that's the 516 and the 516 I'm spraying emulsions with that I can um, thin down the emulsion we've got some anti-reflex there for ceilings I can just add enough water to it that I know that will go through a 516 if I had a 517 and I think I've got a 517 somewhere got a 514 where is it there's a 517 that's not a fine finish one if I was doing just ordinary walls and I wasn't too worried about the fine finish of the double layering of paint to get a nice finish to the surface if you're doing block work or anything like that these jade coloured ones are ideal and the 517 obviously lets more paint onto the surface the more paint on the surface the thicker it's going to be so a fine finish which you don't need to be doing a fine finish on ceilings but I do like to work with that tip and then we go a 516 a 517 and I've also got got a 518 so your golds go in twos so you go a gold 516 six, and a 518 your JD coloured ones which is your normal, normal like a contractor one they'll go in the numbers of like a 515 a 517 a 519 so depending on what you're doing depends on the numbers you're going to be needing right so do we understand that the smaller the number, the smaller the hole, that lets a smaller amount of paint through. So your paint's got to be good quality, thin enough to go through it. The thicker your paint, you might find that you're spraying and you can't get it through a, a 20, uh, 206. So what do you do? You go to the next one up, you go to a 208, that lets a bit more paint through. So hopefully I've uh, made you understand that a little bit better. I'm going to complicate it even more and talk about the spray um, mesh and the filters because in the gun this is a tri-tech gun again you release it this this should only be hand tight yeah because I'm spraying tomorrow eggshells I'm using an Everol 40 which is a satin finish I'm getting ready that's a red you see that that's a red um, filter that goes in the gun now when you're working anything from I believe it's a 0.10 or less so a 0.10 a 0.8 a 0.6 you want the finest guard you can get which is the red the next one up from a red is the yellow I think that's I think they class that as a hundred so that's that's quite fine that would be ideal from a 10 to a 12 possibly a 14 but you might find that you're better around about the the 10 and the 12 this will do you the 6 the 8 the 10 that's obviously going to restrict paint flow so that's why you've got to have the good quality paint thinner that it can actually go through that now when we go to the emulsions for walls and I'll go back to that shady green coloured spray tip 517 you might be doing masonry paint outside so you might be using a 517 or a 518 um, don't forget you can go different numbers on these these can be five sixes I don't know whether there's a seven but you double it that will give you um, a 10 inch a 12 inch 
I think you can get um, 10s and 12s, so you double that, you 20, 24 inch fan patterns, which are really wide if you want to get a lot of paint on. So if you're using these ones, you need obviously the open, the open coarse ones, which will let a bit more um, of the thicker paint through, because the orifice of that spray tip isn't going to block as much. Obviously the, the 206 and the 208 are going to block quite a lot if you've got paint that's not been strained and it's going to go through it and then block at the tip. Hopefully when you're using your yellows or your reds, any little fragments, any little bits of um, paint that aren't um, fine enough to go through these get caught there and it doesn't get caught in your spray tip. So hopefully that's making you understand that really open coarse one that's ideal for just ordinary emulsions inside outside masonry but don't forget you've got to work out what spray tip you need for the paint that you're using if you're using emulsions that are thicker if you're using thicker paints you need to be opening up your orifice size to let a bit more paint through but this that's a bit of a trial and error that you need to be just having a bit of a practice with that at home or on jobs that don't matter so much like block work or something like that so i put that on the gun don't forget i've told you on previous videos i have some vaseline put a little bit of vaseline on my finger and just wipe it around the threads because there's nothing worse than build up paint over the threads put it on there tightly it all in Just hand tight, that's fine. Clip it in place. Right, back to the spray guards. Again, spray guards are exactly the same. I'll put a little bit of Vaseline on. That goes on there. Right. Now what's interesting, I touched at the beginning about the spray guards, I've got different ones. That's the Tri-Tech. Also got the Graco ones, the blue ones that do the rack um, spray tips, that will also go on there because it's the same thread. Tightens on there, exactly the same. Now, the Graco have also got the fine finish tips and the low pressure. This is a, what's this one? This is a 210, so that's two inches, um, sorry, not two inches, that'll give me a four inch from the two to the 10. Forget that, what a load of nonsense I've just said there. It's a 210, so it gives you a four inch spray, spray fan pattern, and it's doing the, the 10, which is the orifice size, which is 0 0.010 thousandth of a, an inch. So that's um, a fine finish tip. Going back years, I don't really have any. Yeah. Yes, I have. Going back years, I don't, I don't know whether they still do these. They do. They did black tips. Now these are my old ones. That's a four thirteen. Now I don't actually think that doesn't go. It's got me thinking now because I've not used this one. No. The blue guard is for the fine finish, the green tips, and also the blue, because they do a blue, that's also a rack, RAC, that fits there. But the black tips, I'm trying to remember, it was an orange, I think it was an orange guard that fitted that. I don't use these anymore because obviously I've not got the guards for it to fit, but they were probably going back 20, 25 years since I've last used these. So that fits on there. You can still use a different gun with a different um, guard with that guard's matching tips. Again, somebody give me some feedback on that because I can't remember um, the black tips, what they went with. I think it was an orange guard. I don't know what they used to call those now. So take that off. comes off. I'll throw another one into the mix. That one. Well that's the orange guard. I think that's off the um, Titan sprayer I've got. But also 
that fits on there. So I can intermix different tips with the matching guard on different guns. And again, if I've got my um, Titan gun, which is in the box, I can put the Titan um, guard on with the Titan tips. I can put Tri-Tech, Greg K. So I can get all these all on the same gun, which is good, they're all intermixed. The thread size, and somebody who knows, give me the comments below what size that thread is. I'm not sure off the top of my head. Right, the next, next last bit. I don't want to bore you anymore. Can you see that in there? That's the little seal of the gasket. Now, the end of that, I should be able to push it in there. Show you. That fits that gap. If I push that in there. Can you see what I'm doing? I should be able to push it out. It might be a little bit stuck. Or that way, I can turn it round and loosen it. Now, with every new, with every new tip that you get. You get a seal and a little, um, I don't know what even you call the metal bit, but it is the seal that fits in there. Now, you swap that, you can swap it every time you change your tip, but I keep mine in for a little bit longer. And then when it doesn't um, seem to be working so well, you swap it. I'll try and get that out, another line it up. There you go. Pushed it out. It's just there, look. You see it? Put a little bit of white, there's a bit of paint left around it. So that goes in the end of there. Just drop it in place, line it all up, put it on the end of you spray it and push it in and then line it up it's got that in and that goes in there and it fits snugly if you haven't got one of those in place you'll find it leaks and you'll get paint everywhere now again a little bit of Vaseline a little bit of Vaseline just across the side we spray it on the end so when that goes in there it's metal on metal but I've got a little bit of lubricant because we like a little bit of a lubricant when it comes to spraying so that spins around nicely now sometimes you find that doesn't spin so easy if that's on there and you've over tightened it tighten it down if I've over tightened it and again this is only finger tight you need to be you can't move that round and then you've got pressure from the actual unit. Sometimes you can't move that in and out because the pressure through the pipe pushing against that little gasket seal is restricting your movement on that. Now I've got no pressure on the gun at the moment because there's nothing in there's nothing in uh, my sprayer, so I can move it round. But just be mindful that if you do find that that's very tight to move, release the pressure on your sprayer. Obviously airless get the primer going so it pumps back into the um, paint that you're using to release the pressure from the gun. Trigger it to try and see if anything comes out. That'll probably release the pressure and you will be able to move that a lot easier. Also, you might find you've over tightened it. Again, that only needs to be finger tight. Just enough to hold in place and not leak. And look, that spins around. And I can also pull it out. So. I think for now we're bored you enough we can then just um, call it a day anybody who's got any questions and again please comments below because I can't remember what the different um, spray tips are for the black one on the grey coast because I don't use them anymore can somebody tell me what the tips are um, that go with the actual correct guard these are my old ones, I don't use them anymore because they're worn out. You can use worn out tips on um, things that you don't worry too much about. Probably brickwork, block work, 
render where you don't worry so much about um, the, the wear actually on the spray tip. Once the spray tip's worn, you'll notice that the feathering on the edges, it won't be spraying nicely. That's something that you can um, Google and find out yourself. Once you've um, got a worn spray tip, bin it or put it to one side just to use on jobs that it doesn't matter. It's always nice to use a nice spray tip that's actually giving you a nice fan pattern. Nice little bit of a feather on the edges without any tails. Don't forget that your tails are coming because your pressure's too low. We'll go into that at another time on another video about your pressures and things like that. But for now, hopefully, I've tried to make it as simple as possible on what the sizes are for the 516s, the 416s. I've got loads, 514, I've got 518, I've got the 208, which is down there. Got 517, so you can see that I'm spraying it about 10 inches on most of them. Again, any questions, just ask. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, do everything you can, please. Um, and obviously comments, because I do like feedback from people. And um, for now, we'll call it a day, and we'll go, thank you.